If you've ever played D&D, you'll know that when it comes down to the line, it doesn't matter how buff your character is. If you happen to roll poorly and whatever you're rolling against in battle rolls well, bad things will happen. I mean, I recently played a charity campaign where it took us literally two hours to clear the first room of a dungeon because everyone was rolling well enough to stay alive, but poorly enough not to make any dent in the evil menaces we were attacking. And we were saved, I kid you not, by the hotel fire alarm going off. And I was in a fursuit. And it was raining. And in the very same way, it doesn't matter how well serviced your car is or how loved it is, sometimes things will just go wrong because the great d20 in the sky has rolled against you and you've used up all of your spell slots. More than a century of internal combustion engine car dominance has meant that if you've been driving for any length of time, you are at least partly familiar with the way an internal combustion engine works or someone near and dear to you is. Even if you're stuck on the side of the road with no idea why the vroom vroom doesn't, you've probably got someone in your phone that you can call for help. And most tow truck operators will also know some basic diagnostic skills to help you get back on the road as quickly as possible. With an EV, it's different. Not only are you less likely to know someone who knows some of the basic things to check if things stop working, but you're also less likely to encounter a tow truck operator who understands and is okay with working on an EV. So today, in the interests of the age-old adage that information is empowerment, let's go through some of the common things that can go wrong with your EV, how to diagnose some of those problems at the side of the road, and what to make sure that a tow truck operator does and does not do if things go awry. In order to keep this video pretty short, I'm going to stick to the very basics here. So there's a lot of things I'm not going to mention, particularly when it comes to electric car accidents. That said, if you're watching this video and you're curious about some of the things you can do in an accident, well, I would suggest that the towing portions of this video most certainly can be useful but you should probably also go and watch our video that is specifically on electric car accidents and what you should do next. I've got some experience there. There's a link in the down below. In my introduction, I mentioned that even the most well-serviced car can have a bad day, but it's certainly less likely that your car will break down if you get it regularly checked at a dealership or in fact a friendly independent repair specialist there are a bunch of checks that you're meant to do on every car and your owner's manual will helpfully list the things you should be checking on a weekly or a monthly basis. That maintenance isn't optional, no matter what you might read online, and following the guidance here can help minimise, although not completely eliminate, the risk of a breakdown. Just as pilots would never dream of taking to the skies in a plane whose maintenance was overdue or whose fuel tanks had not been properly checked for water, you shouldn't be driving a car with tyres you haven't checked regularly or lights you haven't examined. There's actually a current investigation with the NTSB into an accident involving a rebuilt plane where the pilot didn't check their fuel for water before takeoff and the plane tragically subsequently suffered a stall and crashed, killing the pilot. We won't come crashing out of the sky if we don't check our tyres, but I think you have my point. As I've just mentioned tyres, Let's start there. If your car suffers a flat tyre, it's no longer a given that it will have a spare wheel for you to use. And while there are a minority of EVs on sale today with spare wheels, the Rivian R1T and R1S, the Ford F-150 Lightning and the Audi Q8 e-tron all come to mind as having spare wheels, the majority of EVs on sale today don't. Instead, you'll need to choose between a can of fix a flat or calling a tow truck. This kind of breakdown is generally pretty easy to deal with and the turnaround can be pretty quick too. But I do have some quick things to point out here. First, if you do have a spare tyre, 
make sure you understand how to access it and how to fit it before you need to. And when you do your weekly tyre pressure checks, you do carry out a weekly tyre pressure check, don't you? Get the spare tyre pressure checked as well. There's nothing worse than being at the side of the road in bad weather as trucks whizzed past you, trying to figure out how to get the spare wheel out and fitted, only to find it's flat. If your car does come with a spare tyre, you'll also get an approved jack to lift the vehicle up and some way of loosening and then tightening the relevant wheel nuts. In a recent video on tyre choice on this channel, some of you asked about the specifics of jacking up an EV, and the answer should be that if your car is meant to be jacked up, the owner's manual will document the places where you can safely attach a jack in an emergency. It goes without saying that some EVs are a lot heavier than internal combustion engine models, so if you are using a third-party jack, do check it's rated to lift your vehicle. If you follow your manufacturer's recommendations regarding jacking points, you shouldn't damage your car's battery pack. But this is one of those points where you need to keep an eagle-eyed eye on any tow truck operator or tyre shop employee that wants to jack up your car. Know the jacking points and offer to show them to a tow truck operator or a tyre shop employee if they're unfamiliar with the vehicle or doing it wrong and be clear that you're worried about battery pack damage if they try to jack somewhere else. If you tell them that, they'll probably listen to you. If you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and you've only got a can of fixer flat, it is up to you to make that judgment call over what happens next. We've usually opted not to use it in our fleet as it's messy first and second, it can do damage to your tyre and wheel if you're not careful. Therefore, in the case of a flat tyre, I'd always recommend calling a tow truck if you've not got a spare wheel to put on. Which is where the first really important thing comes into play. Be really explicit when you call a tow company about your vehicle. In some countries, breakdown services use a fleet of pickup trucks or vans that have integrated or folding towing dollies that can be used to tow stricken vehicles. These will lift up the stricken axle and tow the car with the other axle on the ground. But when it comes to EVs, that can cause problems with all-wheel drive models because unlike internal combustion engine vehicles, which usually have the ability to disengage the wheels from the gearbox and engine by placing it into neutral, EVs don't have any way to disconnect their motors from the wheels. This means that you should never ever tow an EV along the road with any axle usually powered by the motor touching the ground. Which for all-wheel drive versions usually means you'll need a flatbed truck for the vehicle to sit on rather than make use of a towing dolly. Obviously, this goes for any type of breakdown, not just a flat tyre, but being able to communicate that to the tow truck operator is really important. That said, if you break down in your EV or suffer a flat and require a tow, be prepared for the longer than usual wait time because of this. Because sometimes you'll get an operator who either doesn't understand what you're trying to say, or we'll just ignore what you say and send someone in a pickup truck because that's company policy. And if that happens, you may be left stranded by the first pickup truck operator until a flatbed arrives. I once had a Morris Minor fail on me at the side of the road because I'd failed to tighten the coil bolts. And despite me telling the operator what the problem was, they still sent someone who was completely unprepared for the actual breakdown. Tire woes out of the way, let's deal with the next likely breakdown issue, being stuck at a charging station. There are, of course, two types of being stuck at a charging station. The first is arriving with basically no charge and not having enough to make it elsewhere, is mercifully far less common these days than it used to be a decade ago because most modern charging sites now have multiple charging stations next to each other. Unless you happen to own a Chidemo equipped EV, in which case there's often only one functional charging station per location. The second version, being physically stuck to the charging station, is unfortunately more common. To the first of these two charging breakdowns, the I don't have enough to continue scenario. If you arrive at a charging station with a limited amount of charge and you can't get a charging session to initiate, 
I would advise that you not carry on if you know for sure that you're not going to make an alternative charging station. The more experienced you are as a driver, the more likely it is you'll be able to figure a way to get out of that particular situation and find somewhere else to charge. But if in doubt, stay put. Frankly, running out of charge at the side of the road is dangerous, doesn't look good for EVs, and while you might not like the idea of staying at a broken charging station waiting for a tow truck, it is hugely preferable to being in the middle of nowhere, especially if your cell phone might not work. The second type of charging breakdown is a little easier to deal with. It's the one where your car and the charging station become one in marriage and refuse to divorce, and is usually only a problem with fast charging stations. Although in Europe and countries where level two charging station uses the type two charging connector, it can also happen there from time to time because the charging connector locks to the vehicle. In order to protect you, the vehicle, and the charging station, your car and the charging station may lock together at the start of a charging session. And when charging is finished, they should automatically unlock. Sometimes though, that doesn't happen either due to a mechanical issue with the car or charging station or because there's a foreign body lurking somewhere in the system. Sometimes the charging station itself will also fail to properly end its charging session and all of those things can leave your car married to the cable. The first thing to point out here is that you should always, always, always check that the charging station has actually finished its session. Your car probably has a menu somewhere on its dash that lets you check the status of charging and the charging station itself should also say if it thinks there's a charging session in progress. In this instance, especially for fast charging sessions, you shouldn't try to disconnect the cable from the car if either the station or the car thinks that charging is still happening. If that is the case, then you're gonna to need to call the charging station company and explain what's going on before you try and disconnect anything. If the charging session is most certainly not still in progress, but the cable is still stuck, most modern EVs now have some form of manual release cable somewhere exactly for this purpose. Not all, but most. Your owner's manual, the one you've most certainly read, right, will tell you where this is. In some EVs, it's hidden under the hood, sometimes behind a trim panel, and sometimes it's more easily accessible, like a pull cable somewhere in the trunk or hidden next to the rear light. Again, read up on this location before you need it because you'll save yourself a lot of time, hassle and stress if you do. Regardless of if you have a cable release or not, do not, under any circumstances, try to jimmy the cable off your vehicle. You risk breaking the car, or the cable, and that would be costly, and we don't want that. But bear in mind as well that your average tow truck operator won't be able to help you in this situation either. It's one where you're gonna need to call your automaker or the local dealership for help, as well as the charging station operator. Next up on our list of breakdowns is the ominous failure to turn on. This is often the result of a flat 12 volt accessory battery, and it's often easier than you might think to fix. While not all failure to turn on issues are the result of a flat 12 volt accessory battery, you'll usually be able to tell if it's the root cause or not long before you try to turn your car on. For example, if your car has a flat 12 volt battery, your keyless entry system may not work. And for cars with no physical door handles, you might even struggle to get into your vehicle. Without going into huge detail here, most, but not all electric vehicles have a small 12 volt accessory battery that operates in a similar way to the 12 volt starter battery in an internal combustion engine vehicle. But rather than turn over the starter motor, the 12 volt battery in an EV is used to activate the low voltage circuits that then engage the electromechanical contactors used to connect the high voltage traction battery to the car's high voltage circuitry. If the 12 volt battery is dead or low, it can't engage those contactors and the car won't power on. You may see a warning symbol or two on the dash if the car isn't completely dead. And because of the high voltage battery not engaging, you won't be able to charge that 12 volt battery back up again. 
We've actually made several videos on this channel in the past, including one from a very long time ago explaining why 12 volt EV batteries tend to die more frequently than ICE starter batteries. But there are at least a few things you can have in your arsenal to help prevent this breakdown from spoiling your day. First, buy a 12 volt jump starter, they're normally about $100, and read up in your car's manual as to where the jump start points are. Usually, if you can power the car on with a jump starter, the main contactors will then engage and then you'll start charging the 12 volt battery from the DC to DC converter. It can, at a push, get you to where you need to go or maybe even get you to somewhere where you can buy a replacement 12 volt battery. Second, treat yourself to a voltmeter and learn how to use it. Voltmeters are useful tools to have around the place anyway, and if you have one that you can use to check your car's 12 volt battery, you should at least be able to see how low the battery really is. If you're feeling really fancy, you might even want to get a battery tender to top off your battery overnight once in a while. Although if your battery does need topping off at night, the chances are it will soon die completely. That said, it's also conceivable that your battery is drained because you left an accessory circuit on or you left the lights on. While some EVs are pretty good at detecting that you've left lights or other things on and turn them off to keep the battery from going flat, not all EVs do this. So yeah, having a voltmeter, a jump starter and maybe a battery tender is a good thing. I should also note here that you may find it's the key that's dead, not the 12 volt battery. If you try to turn your car on and it tells you there's no key detected, your key fob battery might be dead. And again, the manual probably lists a place where you can place the key to start your vehicle, even if you have a dead key fob inside. And before I leave this section completely, if you have an EV with non-manual doors, such as some Teslas or like a Ford Mustang Mark E, for example, make sure that you know how to open up your vehicle when the 12 volt battery is dead. Usually you're required to add a 12 volt jump starter to some hidden cables hidden behind a trim panel on the exterior of the vehicle. And every make and model of vehicle is subtly different. So learning where they are and how to use them can save you time and possibly money. The last type of breakdown we're going to cover today is the one where your car tells you that there's a battery fault or a drivetrain malfunction. This can sometimes follow a low battery warning, even if your car has a reasonably full battery pack or some other random warning. And it can also occur after you hit something on the road. While it's fair to note that a low 12 volt battery can sometimes cause ghosts in the machine and present random errors, including ones that appear to be drivetrain related, it is generally safer to assume that the master warning type of error is genuine and that you really should stop driving when safe and possible. If you are 100% sure that the issue isn't nefarious, it's worth finding a place to stop to reboot your car by power cycling it. But generally, if you have a traction power reduced or something similar followed by a stop now kind of warning, you should do what the car says. Find somewhere safe, turn the vehicle off and get out. If in doubt, stay out of your vehicle and stand somewhere safe where you won't be hit by other vehicles call for assistance and explain that your vehicle has that particular warning. When you're doing all of this, check around the vehicle safely for signs of any damage to the battery pack and keep an eye out for any signs of smoke. While it's unlikely a fire will happen, it's always well worth keeping an eye out for unusual events that could cause one, especially if you might have just hit something on the road. And to add to that, when the tow truck arrives, the same precautions exist for dealing with towing to a dealer as if you have a flat tire. Make sure they lift all of the driven wheels off the road and check the tow truck operator knows how to enter the vehicle's official towing mode, which some cars, including Teslas, have specifically added to their vehicles to allow the vehicle to be safely loaded onto and off a tow truck without damaging the tires, wheels or drivetrain. In finishing off the video, it is always worth investing in and carrying an OBD2 to smartphone dongle, usually Bluetooth, Bluetooth LE or Wi-Fi. This would enable you to check the car's onboard diagnostic system for any errors logged in the car's computer. 
The gold standard for OBD2 scanner apps is the Android Talk Pro program, but similar programs exist for Apple iOS devices. And having one that scans for errors and identifies the errors with your particular EV is a massive help when it comes to figuring out what the real problem is, and it could also save you a costly repair bill further down the line, as well as make sure the dealership isn't lying to you. So there you have it, what you can do in an emergency when your car breaks down. Oh, and please do consider buying some emergency flares and a reflective jacket. They're not legally required in all countries, although some countries do require them. But even if they're not required, they can keep you safe at the side of the road while you wait for a tow. It sure as heck beats rolling a D20 athletic check to see if you dodge that car that clearly hasn't seen you or your stranded EV at the side of the road. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are more than some of the 1500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon, YouTube, and Ko-fi, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just over $10 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters. Ken F22, Tom Stovall, Sean Harper, Jeffrey Anderson, Welly Yee, James Finley, Rebecca Fussell, SRS5694, Jack Rupel, BMW K1, Larry Ronning, Sean K, MD, Did Great, Mike Kainka, Mario Murillo, Dave Nelson, Abraham Palmer, Ed Bieler, and Peter Nelson. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have a good old fashioned PO box you can reach us at. The address is linked below. Also, if you're in need of some swag, you'll find out our swag store in the down below. This month, we are celebrating wrangling EV FUD with an awesome new design by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think that this one is well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving!